everyone welcome back to another video and today is very important because we're going to be going over the update that they made for the 6.4 special site as you can see we're back on the lodestone as of right now we only know bits and pieces we are going to be getting the letter from the producer which is going to be coming out the 12th which is i'm pretty sure the friday after this current friday so next week but they did go ahead and post a little mini update for the Dark Throne. So patch 6.4 special site's been updated with details on upcoming content, including the main scenario, the new raid dungeon, Pandemonium, the new dungeon, the Etherfront, the Unreal Trial, Containment Bay, Z1T9, and additions to the duty support. So let's go ahead and just have a quick look at it. So we do have the artwork, which I have been so happy about when I first saw it because they haven't even released that with the letter from the producer yet. But we have Golbez on the throne. We see him holding a large sword and what is terrifyingly <laughs> clear that he has Ezdaya kind of wrapped around the throne. If you're a Final Fantasy IV fan like I am, then you already know that he does have the powers of a shadow dragon. So I'm guessing that Ashdaya is probably become a Void Scent or maybe even close to becoming a Void Scent and he's able to manipulate her after so many years of basically slowly being eaten alive and maybe with the loss of her eye just made her too weak to be able to resist his influence. Uh, maybe it isn't even Ashdaya, but he's stolen so much of her power that he basically created a shadow dragon in her image. Who can say? We don't know yet. But I'm pretty sure it is Ashdaya. And also, if you look right above him, you do see the image of what appears to be La Habrea's sigil. So we only see half of it, so I'm pretty sure that's also a reference to Pandemonium. But yes, so we do know that it's called the Dark Throne, and it, it looks so badass, just the artwork alone. So we don't have the release date yet. We do know it's coming in late May. So I would say it's either coming out the 23rd or the 30th. I'm guessing it's going to be coming out the 30th. That's just me. But I can't wait to see what's going to happen there. So let's go ahead and see what else they have. In Shadow Looms the Usurper Seat. Already that sounds really good. So we do have some info like the main scenario quest, which is always a big thing for me at least. With a gambit that would cost them their very lives, the Archfiends Kaznazo and Rubicante succeeded in destroying the Void Gate hidden within the depths of Al Sadal's legacy, thus barring them the path to the 13th. Yet where there is a will, there is a way, and so the Warrior of Light and allies continue to search for new means to reach the Void. As for the screenshots we have, we have three of them right here. We have Urinbel and Kryle back in Charlian. I'm guessing that the two of them have been helping us try and track down another way to cross over into the Void. Um, maybe Urinbel has come across maybe another tear or practically a Void Gate somewhere in his travels. Certainly possible. Uh, the next one we have Zero. I can't really tell if it's ice or, or like crystal that she's standing in front of. Uh, maybe it's actually Ceruleum. It looks a little bit like it, including like the little blue fire we have in the corner. But she seems ready to go on a little venture back into the void. And this one here kind of got me crazy because we are clearly back on the moon in Mayor Lamentorum. We're just outside the Watcher's Palace. But we have our alchemist friends also here with us. So this is probably really exciting for them to be up on the moon. I can't wait to see their reactions. But I'm guessing that we're going to be getting some advice from the Watcher because the problem is even if we get back to the Void, we're going to be still stuck on the planet or what's left of it and we have to travel all the way up to the moon of the 13th. So I'm guessing that this is probably the best case scenario of how to actually do that. I was actually really looking forward to how they were going to be getting to the moon because I really don't see them being able to haul the Ragnarok all the way through to the 13th. But yeah, that looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. But here we are moving on to the Raid Dungeon of Pandemonium. And this is going to be the third and final part of the storyline for Pandemonium. So we're going to be wrapping everything up here. As you can see, we have... I, I have to refer to him as Themis. I'm sorry. I just... He's not really Littlebiss to me yet. I just see him as our friend Themis. But 
he really doesn't look too happy. He just looks really, really sad. But I can't tell if this is going to be the theme as from like the ethereal sea, or maybe we go back to the past, which is probably what happened, but I don't know. I'm really excited to see how this story ends, but I'm terrified at the same time. The serene expanse of the ethereal sea is marred by the sudden appearance of pandemonium, which has crossed eons to threaten the source of life itself. Its walls loom unmanned, but you know well what horrors once lie behind them, and in the silence can hear a stirring. So... Yeah, I think it's pretty clear that whatever is going to happen now is going to be possibly blowing our minds. At least I hope it will be. I'm just going to be so sad that we're going to have to say goodbye to Themis, because we know that we are going to have to say goodbye to him, but I'm not ready to say goodbye. <laughs> okay, so the new dungeon is the Ether font. So we actually have two pictures. This here is going to be one of the boss battles. I'm guessing it's going to be the second one. I highly doubt it's going to be the final one. Anyway, as you can see, it's gorgeous here. So we're inside of a cave. We have like this really twisted polar bear that's like has crystal growing on him. I guess he's been exposed to a large amounts of ether for a prolonged period of time. But you see Charlie and architecture all around him. We even have plants growing in the background. So that's going to be a fun fight. I'm really predicting it's going to be a fun fight. But this picture here looks to me like the very entrance. So as you can see, we do definitely still have some Charlie architecture in the background, as well as this glowing light, like a pillar of ether. I just love the polar bears. I, I can't help it. I just love the polar bears. They're just chilling out on the glaciers, not really bothering anyone. I I'm going to feel kind of bad if we have to fight them all, though, So because they look so cute. But yeah, I was actually predicting that something like this was going to happen on um, exactly where the ether font actually was. It was going to be the Isle of, I guess, Ham is how you pronounce it. Anyway, I was predicting it was going to be that for a while. And I'm really glad to see that I was right. So north of the Charlian mainland lies the verdant Isle of Ham, a land long protected by the form as an academic asset due to its abundant wells of ether. Yet with plenty comes... Yet with plenty often comes peril, and what awaits will not so readily relinquish its claim to the island's lifeblood. So I'm guessing we're going to be needing a lot of ether to be able to get back to the 13th, and so we're coming here so that we can borrow some. I don't know. I really don't know how this is going to work out. But if you remember, Charlian used to have like two smaller islands hanging off it. One, of course, was the Isle of Val, which is now in the Sea of Glass on the other side of the world. And this is the second island, which I've been wondering if we were going to be able to visit at any point. So glad to see that we are going to be expanding our reach of the world. Um, we have the new Unreal Trial, which is something I think we were all kind of expecting with Containment Bay Z1T9 Unreal. So this is Zervan. It's been a long time since I once fought with him, but it was fun being able to do him way back then, so it's probably going to be fun to do him now. The foe commander bids you regale him with another tale, and from the ashes of memory does Zervan, the demon, rise again. Stealing yourself for a fiery battle, you cast your mind to the cacophonous clash of good and evil, the war eternal. I see what they did there. So yes, he's going to be an unreal battle mode, so if you want to go ahead and pick a fight with him, I'd say go right ahead. And not much else right now. We do have a look at the new systems with the additional duty supports, which is going to be able to expand to a point that you could take trust members into battles with Stormblood dungeons. So we have five dungeons from Stormblood. In Crimson Sunsets do Hero Rise, and the Warrior of Light must join with Lise, Hien, Gosetsu, and their Scion allies to bring peace to Alamigo and Doma once more. But what this means is, is that you can actually run a few dungeons from Stormblood with your favorite NPCs. So we actually have them here with the Siren Song Sea, Bardem's Metal, Doma Castle, Castrum, Abanya, and Alamigo. So you can actually run in with Gosetsu and Yugiri, who I, I feel like they just did not do her justice. I feel like she did not get like the shining moments like some of the other characters in Stormblood got. Which is unfair, but hey, what can you do? Anyway, I think that's all that we have for right now. We do have a lot more coming. So this is going to be another big patch, which is not very surprising. 
but it's going to be coming out in just a few weeks time so before the end of the month we will be playing 6.4 i will continue to post updates of what they're posting here on the special site and i hope you're all looking forward to it but until next time everyone please take care